Along Embassy Row in Washington, D.C. stands Anderson House, a neoclassical mansion completed in 1905 and now a National Historic Landmark. Originally the winter residence of Lars and Isabel Anderson, the mansion has been the home of the Society of the Cincinnati since 1938. Today, the Society, our nation's oldest historical organization, works to fulfill its mission from Anderson House, where its research library, education program, changing exhibitions, and public events have a home amidst the original interiors of the mansion, where much of the Anderson's furnishings and art collection remain. Anderson House is one of the treasures of DuPont Circle, the most fashionable neighborhood in Washington at the turn of the 20th century. The house was built between 1902 and 1905 for Lars and Isabel Anderson, a wealthy couple whose interests in public service, travel, collecting, entertaining, and American history are on display throughout the mansion. Lars Anderson took great pride in his membership in the Society of the Cincinnati as the descendant of an original member. He had the Society's insignia incorporated into the decoration of the house, including the murals of the choir stall room. The Andersons commissioned the celebrated muralist H. Siddons Mowbray to paint the upper walls and ceiling of the choir stall room. The murals depict emblems of patriotic orders that Lars and Isabel belonged to and convey their accomplishments and ideals. The Society of the Cincinnati was founded at the end of the Revolutionary War by officers of the Continental Army who wanted to commemorate the achievement of American independence. They named the organization for Cincinnatus, a hero of the Roman Republic and embodiment of civic virtue. In the 5th century BC, the Senate called on Cincinnatus to defend Rome from foreign invaders. Cincinnatus led the army to victory, then resigned his commission, returned power to the Senate, and retired to his farm. The name Cincinnatus became synonymous with unselfish patriotism. George Washington, who resigned his commission at the end of the Revolutionary War, was widely celebrated as the American Cincinnatus. The founders of the society referred to themselves as Cincinnati, a plural form of Cincinnatus, to indicate their commitment to the virtues of the Roman hero. They made membership in the society hereditary, so their effort to perpetuate the memory of the American Revolution would always have champions. With over 4,000 members today, the society works to promote understanding and appreciation of the American Revolution and its legacy. That mission is carried out by the American Revolution Institute of the Society of the Cincinnati, launched in 2014. The head of the society is the President General. George Washington and Alexander Hamilton were the first two men to hold this office. Portraits of the first generation of society leaders and of its most recent President General hang together in the East Stair Hall of Anderson House symbolic of the society's origins and its future. The portrait of Morgan Lewis, a veteran of the Revolutionary War and the society's sixth president general, was painted in 1840 by Richard Berlin. It is the earliest portrait to depict the Diamond Eagle, the badge of the office of the president general. The Diamond Eagle is the most extraordinary example of the society's insignia. The insignia was designed by Pierre Lafont, an original member of the society, and symbolizes the achievement of American independence and the commitment of those who have worn it to the memory of the revolution. The Diamond Eagle was commissioned in 1784 as a gift for George Washington from French naval officers who served in the Revolutionary War. Consisting of 198 diamonds, emeralds, and rubies, the Diamond Eagle has been worn by Washington and every President General since. Since its founding, the Society's purpose has been to perpetuate the memory of the Revolutionary War, 
a mission first expressed in the Society's founding document, known as the Institution, written in the spring of 1783. The American Revolution is one of the most important events in world history. It secured our national independence, established our republic, created our national identity, and articulated ideals of liberty, equality, civic responsibility, and natural and civil rights that have shaped our nation's history and remain beacons for our future. The portraits on display in the original library of Anderson House help tell the stories of a few of the men who risked their lives for American independence. Among them was Jacob Shubrick, a captain in the South Carolina Continental Line when Henry Benbridge painted his portrait in 1777. A year later, Shubrick died in service. Richard Clough Anderson, a lieutenant colonel in the Virginia Continental Line and an aide-de-camp to Lafayette during the Yorktown campaign, was painted later in life. Richard Clough founded a distinguished family that, three generations later, included Lars Anderson, who built this house. Lars and Isabel Anderson were both born into wealthy families with strong ties to America's founding generations. Lars, the great-grandson of Richard Clough Anderson, was raised in Cincinnati, Ohio and Washington, D.C. before embarking on a diplomatic career. Isabel, who descended from at least eight Revolutionary War soldiers, grew up in Boston and Newport. She met Lars while on her grand tour in Europe, and they married in 1897. Overlooking the ballroom of Anderson House is a portrait of the couple painted by Philip de Laszlo in 1926 that provides a visual summary of their lives together. Both Lars and Isabel wear medals of patriotic orders, honoring their American ancestors and their own achievements. Isabel holds a rolled diploma, representing the honorary doctorate she received from the George Washington University in recognition of her contributions to the American Red Cross. At Lars' side is a sword recalling his military service in the Spanish-American War. The couple sits in front of one of their Flemish tapestries, an icon of their art collection gathered while traveling the world. Much of their art collection was used to furnish Anderson House, where they entertained dignitaries, friends, and family. The ballroom was the scene of musical and theatrical performances, diplomatic receptions, and the occasional large luncheon or dinner. While their lives were full, Lars and Isabel did not have children and decided to bequeath Anderson House to the Society of the Cincinnati whose eagle insignia adorns the ballroom ceiling. It was the most important gift the couple made among their many charitable donations to churches, hospitals, universities, museums, and humanitarian organizations. After Lars's death in 1937, Isabel finalized the gift of the mansion to the Society as its headquarters. The Society opened the house to the public as a museum in 1939. One of the primary functions of Anderson House in the early 20th century was as a venue for entertaining. The second floor dining room was the center of these activities, providing a European-inspired setting for elaborate meals. Private entertaining took on great importance in the nation's capital, where politics and socializing overlapped. The Andersons' guests often included military and government officials, foreign dignitaries, and fellow leaders of high society. The portrait of Isabel Anderson in the dining room reflects the youthful, elegant, and well-bred woman who orchestrated all aspects of the couple's entertaining. Painted by Cecilia Beau in 1900 and 1901, the portrait was dubbed The Hostess by the press. To support their entertaining and other activities in Washington, the Andersons employed at least 20 servants at Anderson House, one of the largest household staffs in the city at the time. From the adjacent serving room, they served the Andersons and their guests 
using dishes bearing the couple's monogram and the Society of the Cincinnati's insignia. Lars and Isabel Anderson shared a passion for travel and world cultures that took them to five continents and helped them amass an eclectic art collection. Their travels and collecting were stimulated by Lars Anderson's diplomatic posts to Great Britain, Italy, Belgium, and Japan. Upon his retirement from the Diplomatic Corps in 1913, Lars commissioned DeWitt Lockman to paint this portrait celebrating his service. The Andersons' travels also inspired Isabel, a prolific author, to write more than 10 accounts of their trips abroad. The couple's collection of European and Asian fine and decorative arts ranges from Flemish tapestries and English furniture to Japanese ivories and Chinese sculpture. The second floor gallery contains a diverse array of these objects. Spanish sculptures of the Passion of Christ coexist with statues of Buddhist and Hindu deities, while carved Japanese ivories rest in Italian cabinets. The display even includes a pair of American swords, relics of Lars Anderson's Civil War ancestors. Anderson House is filled with reminders of Lars Anderson's fascination with American history. Nowhere more so than the second floor key room. The murals on the walls and ceiling of this reception room celebrate iconic events in American history and highlight the participation of Lars's ancestors in them. The Andersons commissioned H. Siddons Mowbray to paint the murals. The first wall mural commemorates the end of the Revolutionary War, the founding of the Society of the Cincinnati, and the peaceful transition to a civilian republic. The other wall murals represent westward expansion, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. To complement the patriotic murals, Lars displayed his ancestor Richard Clough Anderson's 18th century society eagle and membership certificate together in an elaborate frame. The imagined scenes of the murals convey the importance of serving one's country and memorialize the men and women who fought to establish and preserve the American Republic. The Society of the Cincinnati and its American Revolution Institute work to convey the same message today with tours of Anderson House and a host of other programs. The Society's research library is one of the most important resources in the United States for advanced study on the American Revolution. With more than 50,000 books, manuscripts, prints, broadsides, and maps, the library collections document how the revolutionaries won a war against one of the world's great powers. Among the library treasures is the original manuscript of General Rochambeau's memoir of his life, including his experiences commanding the French troops in America. A highlight of the map collection is Sebastian Bowman's plan of the Siege of Yorktown, Published in Philadelphia in 1782, it was the first American map to celebrate the decisive Allied victory. The library draws scholars from all over the world and awards fellowships each year to support use of the collections. The Society is also digitizing important works so anyone with access to a computer can use them. The library and museum collections take center stage in the changing exhibitions mounted in the former billiard room of Anderson House. These exhibitions examine the complex history of the revolution, its heroes and villains, its great events and major themes, and its legacy. The exhibition, America's First Veterans, 
explores the stories of men and some women who fought in the Revolutionary War and follows their fates after the war's end. A centerpiece of this show is the oldest known portrait of a homeless veteran, which pictures Revolutionary War soldier Joseph Winter. John Nagel painted this portrait in 1830 after meeting the elderly veteran huddled in an alley in Philadelphia. Changing exhibitions showcase other gems from the collections, including weapons, medals, rare books, maps, ceramics, and newspapers. The Society's education programs advocate for greater emphasis on the American Revolution in curricula and provide teachers with tools to share the remarkable story of the Revolution in their classrooms. The annual Master Teachers Seminar brings teachers to Anderson House for an intensive week of study and discussion to enrich their knowledge of the Revolution. The video game Revolutionary Choices challenges players to defeat the British without trampling on rights or fracturing the Union. The game was tested and demonstrated by students at Anderson House and middle schools in Washington, D.C. Other education resources include curriculum and lesson plans, traveling trunks, and regional teacher workshops. Anderson House was built during the era when Washington finally took its place among the great capitals of the world. The growth of the city helped to fulfill George Washington's vision for his country and its capital which he described in 1798. A century hence, if this country keep united, it will produce a city of a magnitude inferior to few others in Europe, on the banks of the Potomac, where one is now establishing for the permanent seat of government of the United States, and where elegant buildings are erecting. Our first president also hoped that the Republic would endure with citizens committed to civic engagement and public service. From the revolutionaries to the Andersons to all of us today, the Society of the Cincinnati works to ensure that the Revolution and its legacy are not forgotten. Learn more about Anderson House and the Society's work at AmericanRevolutionInstitute.org and societyofthecincinnati.org.